Well, welcome to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures. My name's Alex, and welcome to a how-to video. This bit of video is taken from my larger Arctic vlog. Which is gonna be a... That could've gone better. I'm in a ditch. But I thought I'd make it to a small individual video so it's easier to find for people who are looking to solve this issue. The issue, how to turn off smart regenerative charging or the smart alternator features in this Mark 8 Ford Transit, but how to do it in the official Ford way using the built-in feature called Smart Inhibitor, which disables smart regenerative charging on this Transit. I'm going to be showing something called an eight-way interface connector in this video, which is one of my 2018 Ford Transit Mark 8. The newer facelift models, which are about 2019 onwards, they use a 10-way interface connector, but the same principle applies. First off, why would you want to disable smart regenerative charging? In my van, ever since I put my new starter battery in, I see my voltage when I'm driving, which is about 14.6, go down to the low to mid 12s. The van's currently gone into smart alternator mode. You can see by up to there, engine's running, but it's currently 12 volts. And that's exactly what smart regenerative charging does. The vehicle believes the starter battery is charged, so it turns off the alternator output. For me, that's a problem. I have DC-DC chargers which are running to charge my leisure system in the back of the van. When the alternator output is turned off by the vehicle's ECU because it thinks it doesn't need to be on anymore, even though my DC-DC chargers are running, they've got a signal tells them to run, they're not actually working anywhere near full because there's no alternator outputting. And even though there's a load on the vehicle, it should be kicking the smart regen charging off, it's not. One of the reasons in the manual for the smart inhibitor is for customer high output mode, for customers who need high DC outputs whilst driving, which the smart regenerative charging would mess with. There are a number of ways to activate the smart inhibitor, official Ford way of doing it, which we're gonna see in the video. Here's an example of it in reality whilst I'm driving. The ECU of the vehicle believes the starter battery is fully charged, so it's dropped the voltage down, as well as cutting the output of the alternator itself. As soon as I turn on the lights, the vehicle knows there's an additional load and the voltage rises slightly. I do get a little bit of more power from the alternator, but not enough to have the chargers running at full. This is functioning exactly how smart regenerative charging should work, and this is how it's meant to be but it's being a little bit too smart for my use case. And there is a correct way of disabling it. So as previously mentioned in the series, I popped into Ford. So the very nice man who I was working at the parts department has printed me a picture of what I need. To get a cable, and they wanted 129 pounds for that cable. However, I used my partner Jo as a parts mule when she flew out. Up point of Jo being here, she's also been my parts mule from the UK. And now we get the truth as to why I'm really on this trip. To bring me one that I had on eBay in the UK for 29 pounds, so that I can use the, the eight-way interface connector in the driver's seat and bridging two of the wires there is it's one of the correct methods listed in the DEMM manual for this van of how to turn off smart regenerative charging and turn on conventional charging, which means my DC DC chargers will work properly. I was about to start doing all of this and I've just uh, noticed on my camera, on my front roof camera that the Northern Lights are out. So let's quickly go see if the Northern Lights are in fact out. And then we'll get back to it. Oh yeah, a little bit. Northern lights are out a little bit. Right, next is to disable, or give me the ability to disable the smart regenerative charging on my alternator. There is a correct way to do it for the Fords. So on my van, you have a feature called smart regenerative charging inhibit, which can work in number eight. One of them, if you have the eco button and you hit that, that stops the start stop feature as well as smart regenerative charging. I don't have start stop on my van, but that still does it. Uh, the other way is using the interface connector. So I've got a pre facelift 2018 Mark 8 Transit, where there's an eight way connector believe the newer versions use a 10-way connector, but it's still got the same pin. And to use the smart regenerative charging inhibit feature needs pin three, which is the signal pin to be grounded to the vehicle chassis. Or in this case, pin one on the connector is ground. And if pin three's inhibitor signal is grounded, then smart regenerative charging inhibitor is enabled. You could cut the wires behind it and do it that way, but since there is a proper way of doing it, I have the cable or the harness for it, which is that part code, if people are interested, which is also mentioned in here of the kit to get. And I'm just gonna do it quite simply. I'm just gonna put a switch on the end so I don't always have to use it and crimp the ends of this. So from looking at the orientation of this, I need to use pin cable three, which is the smart charging inhibit pin which is the sort of purple and lilac. 
and the dark black and white whatever this one purple purple with gray purple with lilac and black is ground so at the other end we've got there we go these are my two pins i need and let's just and there we go. We might have now put this on. Let's go ground for central. And let's do that one on that one. So that should be my little switch. I don't need to access it a lot. Or if you wanted to, you could run it neat, nice and neat. For other people who might want to know the other uses, or what you can do is one of the pins is a ignition on. One of them is an engine run, which is quite useful for DC-DC chargers as well. And I'm not entirely sure what IP switch illumination is. One's called vehicle speed. I'm not sure how you would use that. If anyone does know, do tell me. I'm not sure what Ford programmable battery guard feature is. But anyway, give it a quick test. Probably being well, this should beep. There we go. Right, it's all being well. When I plug this in, that should disable my smart regenerative charging. Problem I have is smart regenerative charging is built that plug is inside the driver's chair. And to get there, you need to remove the seat, the starter battery, the starter battery box, and then you can access that plug. So that will be a job for tomorrow. And it's getting even more powerful. Right, next job, fitting that eight-way connector, which means the chair's got to come off. This isn't really the end of the world, but it's just four bolts. One, two, is um, not the most dignified thing. That very cool. It's the way. And Alex forgot to put the handbrake back on again. Unsurprisingly, this is not the first time I've had to use foot pedals with my hands. I once had to stop an out of control taxi whilst I was working in Romania. That's a story for a different day. Note to self, it was flat with the handbrake off. The wind's just changed your direction and uh, well, I decided it wanted to, to move and I couldn't pull the handbrake up because this bar was in the way so I had to use the foot pedal. Anyway, handbrake back on. What I, the plug I'm after is that one on the right down there. Normally you have to take all of this off, then the undo the battery, take the battery tray out. I think I might just be able to put my finger down there and do it. All right, a bit of cleaning first, because um, there's dust everything down there. So, hopefully I can just thread this in here, get it to seat nicely, would be nice. There we go, that went off better than I expected. So all nicely plugged in now. So, run the cable somewhere I can use it and get the chair back on. Right, one chair that one needs to be. I'm using third party power mode of activated by, by grounding a particular circuit. High power mode is accessed by installing the 12 way, I got the older van, which is the three way, uh, into the pin three connector in the driver's seat. So, to actually test this, I needed to get it to go back into smart alternator mode, which is usually after like 15 20 minutes of driving because it does do what it's meant to do conventional charging to get the starter battery back up to where things full and then turn off again. So I need to trigger the smart alternator mode and then once it's done, I can pull over, look at my voltage reading, flip the switch and I think wait five seconds and hopefully I should then see the voltage rise and conventional charging turn off. So let's get the van started. 60 degrees. I just preheated the engine a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah, 48. This should go nicely up all the way to 14 and probably stay there for a bit. And on the screen on the back, we should start seeing the alternator charges come on. There we go. And auxiliary voltage, you can see has gone up. Right. So the main things I want to test is when I've had it drop down, then those charges turn completely off and I'm not getting that much at all. But when I have the lights on, it goes up to about 13.6 volts because the engine thinks, or the also thinks yeah, it has got to do some work. I want to see if it's working by having that drop down to zero and then turning the, the switch and see hopefully this goes back up to this high amount. We should hopefully be able to see the effects of this as well, running on this chart, which is, alt which is going to be the voltage changes. 
Right, let's get driving for the day anyway and see if I can get smart regenerative mode to kick in and then test my switch. Right, smart charging has come on, so the engine's running. It's currently 12 volts because it's turned the alternator off. That means in the back, my DC-DC charger has stopped. So, all being well, which means when I click this button in, I think I know which direction, uh, this should wait five seconds and then turn on. So let's give it a go. There we go, smart. Alternator charging disabled, which should cause this to boot up in a minute. Well, it took a little minute to creep up, but it went up for about that 600, 650 up to 700. So let's just turn this switch back off again. And if I return it to there, it should turn off again, although I don't know how long it takes. Maybe it takes a bit longer to reactivate. Oh no, there we go. And that's pretty much everything. One thing that we'll bring up is whilst you can have a signal live to the DC-DC charger and turn off the engine's detection mode on the Victron ones, that isn't the problem here. I actually have ignition lives running them. It's that even though they're on, they're already getting about 200 watt output. Because the old safe was off, there was nothing to pull from. There's no power there. They could have just presumably just get a bit from the starter battery. And if you made it this far, I hope this video has been some help to you. Whilst I've shown the rather expensive Ford connector for doing it, you could just, you can find the name of that connector. You might be able to just buy the connector itself online, which would be significantly cheaper and just make your own cable for it. Or you might be able to deep in the whole plug itself and just, and just bridge those two wires there for you. And if you've enjoyed this content, consider checking out some of the other things I do in this transit from the Arctic content to some of my other technical reviews and how to's. But Really, I just want to make content for you guys to enjoy. So thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.